This is not the beginning of my talk. It's the last page of my talk, yeah. And I thought about the very brief review of our recent work, yeah. Our recent work, uh, then I decided what, I mean recent, because first work in charge transfer, uh, one, one of the first, it's not first one, was uh, beginning of 50, Alex did uh, uh, several works here, yeah, which really uh, built up this theory of uh, charge transfer. But uh, for me, it uh, was my birthday about, yeah. <laughs> in this case, yeah, I uh, decided that um, maybe I will talk about our uh, recent result. Recent, it means that related to a specific question, question of the uh, uh, charge transfer uh, emission, uh, uh, X-ray emission, yeah. This is title of talk. In, in introduction, I very briefly uh, describe the uh, how X-ray uh, emitted in uh, charge exchange collision of highly charged ions. Then I will talk about the astrophysical sources of uh, charge exchange X-ray emission. I uh, will uh, analyze the spectra, will show our results, and uh, then describe the uh, uh, modeling of uh, different astrophysical objects. Uh, emission from comets, from uh, uh, a planetary atmosphere, if dark moon uh, X-rays, and emission from the heliosphere. Uh, Alex was the uh, first who formulated for us, yeah, for a group of people, this theoretical problem, and uh, we worked for maybe for 10 years, yeah, and uh, this is a group of our uh, collaborators, yeah, not all names in here in this list, yeah, but all collaborators, uh, were important and they uh, certainly uh, bring a lot of uh, understanding and uh, uh, description of the, uh, sorry, may I will change it a little bit, uh, in description of the uh, uh, charge exchange collision. Uh, this is very trivial scheme, yeah. Uh, uh, what's happened if ion collide with neutrals, yeah. This is hydrogen atom. This is a highly charged ion. Suppose, uh, in my case, as example, oxygen-8, completely stripped. Yeah. When this ion collides uh, with a, uh, a neutral gas, it has a chance to capture electron in highly excited state. This is orbits, yeah, which shown here. Uh, and uh, uh, capture to ground state, to lower orbit, is a uh, not probable because, oh, very low, pro has a very low probability because electron doesn't like change energy, yeah. It, it keeps the same total energy as initial ionization potential, yeah. Uh, what's happened after this collision, yeah? Uh, this ion moves, but now it's an ion with uh, additional electron, uh, highly excited, highly charged ions, yeah. If I uh, just remind you scheme of hydrogenic levels, this is scheme of hydrogenic levels, uh, you will see that uh, after population, for example, this state, 4p state, yeah, uh, electron may uh, come to other states may, and radiate photon in this transition. And relaxation path, one of the relaxation paths, this one. Or you have another relaxation path, this one. Uh, if we take into account that this collision populate many levels of this excited ion, not single orbit, yeah, uh, you will have an ensemble of these cascading photons, yeah. They originate from different excited state, and population of this excited state depend on the uh, collisional process, yeah. Uh, this is sketch of the uh, uh, ensemble of the emitted photons, yeah. This is photon energy, this is number of photons. Uh, this is all uh, photons, they are characteristic photon of this specific ion, yeah. But their relative intensity depend on the nature of this uh, partner and depend on the velocity of collision. Uh, what's the difference between common uh, uh, description of spectra which people use in astrophysics and what we will do uh, with this charge transfer? Uh, usual situation in astrophysics, if you have a, a, uh, some discrete characteristic lines, uh, you try to change their intensity as arbitrary parameters and finally you will reach a uh, good description of observational data, yeah. Independently change any lines, yeah. But it's not a case in the charge transfer, because if you uh, uh, pick up one line, this one, uh, relative intensity of other lines, they are fixed, they are given. 
you cannot change them because if you have a, a given velocity and given uh, colliding partner, that's all. It's end of story. It means that instead of doing common fitting of spectra, which people usually do for plasma, you need to work with unit, this unit of uh, modeling. This is single ensemble which you have to use for this velocity and for uh, this uh, partner. And only uh, including this ensemble, I allowed if you're aware about velocity. Okay, this is uh, a bad thing for modeling because uh, it's absolute loss of flexibility. You don't have a freedom to change intensity. But if you uh, uh, will be successful in this modeling, you may extract very accurate information because you have a correlated photons. You don't have only one photons. You have a, a, a system of strongly correlated photons, and you may extract information about velocity, about uh, uh, neutral gas, even not only about the ions. Sorry for this uh, uh, primitive introduction, but it was important uh, uh, for kind of yeah, uh, understanding uh, what uh, uh, was uh, Alex's suggestion about this project and what we start to do. Uh, this is a slide about astrophysical sources which we have. Yeah. Uh, uh, certainly major source of X-ray, it is sun. Yeah, but uh, sun radiates not only photons, it's also emit a plasma. This plasma flux, so-called solar wind, consists of protons, electrons, uh, helium ions, and small fraction of highly charged uh, uh, heavy ions. This is uh, uh, examples of these ions. Yeah. Uh, and this solar wind plasma propagate, and it may uh, collide with the uh, neutral gases. Yeah. With these neutral gases uh, may be uh, uh, just uh, uh, gases from the co uh, planetary atmosphere. In this case, charge transfer collision of highly charged ions this, with neutrals uh, will uh, finally uh, uh, produce uh, this uh, highly charged ion uh, in excited state. And because it's highly charged, you will have a radiation with X-ray photons. It's not only X-ray. You will have a soft and hard photons. But some of them will be X-ray because high Z. And, uh, uh, not only planetary atmosphere exists, also a uh, uh, very important and first example which we uh, uh, found yeah, was an X-ray emission from comet. Yeah. It was uh, discovered relatively recently, 1996. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, it was a big surprise because uh, if you look on the comet, comet is a, a dirty snowball, very cold environment. Yeah. But around this ball, you have uh, some very dilute uh, gas. Uh, yeah which uh, created because of evaporation of this, this uh, nuclear uh, ISIS. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when this gas interact with the uh, uh, solar wind plasma, interact with this highly uh, charged ion, because of charge transfer, you have X-ray emission. Uh, this mechanism uh, was suggested very quickly uh, by Tom Cravens after this uh, surprising discovery. Tom, uh, in a few months, yeah, he suggested this mechanism. And uh, uh, now more than 20 uh, comets, maybe 25, 26 comets, yeah, they uh, have been shown as the sources of X-ray. And all of them very well described by the, this charge transfer mechanism. Yeah. Then it was the application of this charge transfer mechanism to X-ray emission from planets. And finally, I would like to say about a global source which we have. Yeah. Uh, this solar wind plasma collide with interstellar gas, yeah. And the same process happened uh, because interstellar gas mostly consists of the hydrogen and helium neutral gases, yeah. And uh, uh, capture of electron uh, in this collision produce uh, a diffuse X-ray emission, which uh, delocalized. Certainly, you don't have a specific area as here and here. You have a, 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 a sources of emission which spread over the entire sky. But uh, this is a part of the X-ray background which uh, 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 have been discovered more than 30 years ago and still uh, uh, is investigated as a uh, most interesting uh, order, object is X-ray astrophysics. Yeah. Uh, this is artistic sketch of uh, Chandra X-ray telescope or XMM uh, Newton X-ray telescope. It's a major machine which provides the uh, astrophysical observational data. 
Uh, this is nice image of X-ray emission from comets here. Yeah. This is comet McNaught Hartley. And uh, sun, uh, 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 so somewhere in here, this is direction towards sun. Uh, in the usual image of comet, you could see huge tail here. Yeah. This tail related to dust particles and ions. Yeah. Uh, but uh, X-ray emission uh, different. You see that X-ray emission mostly uh, 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 situated in front of uh, nuclear here. Yeah. And center of the br X-ray brightness shifted from the cometary nuclear on the large distance. This distance may be uh, about uh, 20 or 40,000 kilometers. Center of the brightness and cometary nuclear are not the same for X-ray. For visual light, it's OK. They are the same, yeah. Uh, uh, this model, which uh, Tom suggested, yeah, uh, Tom Craven suggested, uh, uh, very naturally explains this effect, yeah, how it's happened. This is a slide which shows this cometary environment and solar wind, yeah. It's slide stolen from uh, Tom Craven's article in the science, yeah. Uh, uh, if you look on this ions, it's a, a typical ion for solar wind, yeah. And the process is the same. Uh, solar wind, uh, highly charged ion is oxygen 7. They collide with the gas. Yeah. This gas appears uh, as a result of evaporation of the ices uh, from the nuclear. Uh, uh, this entire environment of uh, uh, cometary atmosphere may be uh, spread to millions of kilometers. Why? Because uh, this neutral gases propagate with a low velocity about one kilometer per second. And a lifetime in the uh, typical condition of observation, maybe million seconds. In this case, you will see that uh, atmospheric uh, event happen on the uh, uh, remote distances from the nuclear. It may be uh, about millions of kilometers. Yeah. Uh, why happen? Why we talk about the brightness region, something in here? Why it's not in uh, nuclear? If you look on this ion. Uh, they penetrate in more and more dense cometary atmosphere, most at uh, dense atmosphere here and diluted uh, in here. If uh, they uh, ions, uh, highly charged ions, comes to the region of the uh, high density of gas, they may uh, overcome several collisions, sequent collision. Yeah. After this, you see reduction of charge. For example, it starts as oxygen 8, but then it's oxygen 7, oxygen 6, and so on. Finally, if it's, it is low charge ion, yeah, it will be something here, yeah. It certainly participated in charge transfer, but it, uh, uh, this ion uh, not capable to emit X-ray. That's all. It means that they never reach uh, the ions, the cometary nuclear. In this case, you see all emission happen in here, uh, area of major uh, neutralization. Certainly, it's all oversimplified uh, description, but uh, it's a uh, uh, nevertheless show the major physical uh, processes. Uh, I will not describe this in details because I, I think it's uh, require uh, many times. Yeah. I only would like to say that one of the challenging in this uh, description of charge transfer was uh, description of all relaxation passes. Yeah. As again, I mentioned, this is uh, uh, levels of highly charged, uh, highly, charged uh, highly excited ions. And then if I would like to calculate all photons, I need to take all relaxation passes here, 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 and from all states. Yeah, if a uh, number of levels involved in this process large enough, yeah, uh, certainly I will miss yeah some photons if I will calculate this by hand, as usually people did in spectroscopy. They try to find most probable paths. Yeah, but uh, if someone provides the uh, probability of radiative transition. Uh, from one level to another for all set of levels. We may construct the branching ratio of transition, for example, this, 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 or this, from initial n to final n prime, to construct transition matrix with uh, some kind of representation of density matrix. And then uh, to build up uh, this uh, relaxation process as a mathematical process. Because each uh, 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 process with emission of photons reconstruct population of uh, these levels. And finally, this population just uh, go down and accumulate it on these two uh, levels and finally comes here. That's all. In this case, uh, mathematically, it was a, a way which we uh, work, a uh, 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 way of matrix algebra. Alex and I did this for beginning for 
uh, Jupiter X-ray emission, but then we applied this to a uh, description of uh, cometary spectra. Uh, uh, we uh, certainly try to verify the, our theoretical approach uh, to our calculations. Uh, and the best uh, way to verify to compare a result with the uh, laboratory measurement. This is experiment from Peter Beisdorfer group. Uh, a collision of neon 10 uh, with neon, yeah, and then radiation. This uh, green lines, it is a radiation, green points, sorry, uh, green circles, yeah. Uh, our theoretical spectra, this uh, red sharp lines, yeah, it's X-ray emission. This is relative intensity of line. Uh, if we artificially uh, increase uh, width of line, for example, instead one electron volt put 10 electron volt, you have uh, these black curves, yeah. Uh, but this uh, uh, photons which shown in here, it's also photons from the same cascade, only it is soft photons, yeah. You see their energy uh, in insert picture from zero to 400 electron volt. Uh, this is kilo electron volt region. Uh, as I mentioned before, this intensity and this, they are strongly correlated. But if you would like to compare with the experiment, we just put the 100 electron volt resolution, this blue line, it's calculation without any parameters, no adjustment, anything here. And uh, uh, for uh, our condition, it is very good theoretical description and very good spectrum. It's another example, it's from Arachachan group. It's uh, emission of oxygen 7 ion in collision of oxygen 8 with helium. Uh, the same experimental uh, 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 symbols, it's green uh, circles. Uh, theoretical uh, sharp spectra here. If we include the uh, resolution which correspond to their uh, experiment, you see this b uh, black line which in good agreement. This is soft photons. It would be great to have an experiment finally which measures simultaneously all soft photon and all important X-ray photon. At least if it would be extreme ultraviolet and X-ray, it's very useful. Usually we have a, such experimental data, this or this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe uh, 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 we will discuss this during poster session because uh, uh, it's one interesting point in uh, analysis of relaxation of excitation. Sorry for this busy slide, I will not uh, describe all details. Only I would like to say this is uh, uh, experimental, observational, sorry, data from the uh, emission from different comets. This is photon energy, this is relative intensity of signal. Different points, different colors uh, this, uh, show the X-ray spectra detected from different comets with different satellite and in different time. I mean, it's absolutely a different system, but nevertheless, you see that result forms some type of line, yeah? Uh, this uh, 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 oscillating curve, black oscillating curve, our theoretical calculation without any parameters, yeah, just uh, ab initio calculation, uh, only parameter which we use, uh, it's a solar wind composition, we call this slow solar wind, this composition known from uh, other astrophysical uh, measurements not related to X-ray emission, yeah? And you see, uh, when we put our uh, resolution which uh, the same way uh, which resolution in observation, you will see this curve here, brown curve, which relatively well describes general slope. Certainly it's not the best description, but it uh, should be different because solar wind condition change in time, comets in different position, yeah. In this case, you don't need to expect that it will be exactly one line, yeah. But it was a, a great result for us because at least we see we don't need any parameters. We may use average parameters, which known from other measurements, and uh, we're good enough, yeah. Uh, this is just slide illustrate how you may use this X-ray spectroscopy for diagnostic uh, of the cometary uh, environment. This uh, black curve uh, with circles, it is observational data from comet McNaught hartley It's not exactly observational data. It's the best empirical feed of observational data. Yeah. Then uh, we have uh, our synthetic spectra, this is a red curve, without any parameters except only parameters abundances of ions, yeah. Oxygen 6, oxygen 7, and this neon, yeah. This is two numbers, yeah. And then we try to change these two numbers in such a way to reach agreement between observational data black curve and our theoretical synthetic spectra. 
rate curve here. Certainly not always uh, this good agreement here, for example, not good here also difference, but it's the best what we may. After this, we may uh, extract the, these abundances of ions. Yeah. It means that we have a capability uh, from the X-ray spectra extract uh, parameter of the plasma. It may be solar wind plasma or stellar wind plasma, depending on the, what we measure. Uh, this example of a very interesting observation, it's a comet McNaught, uh, sorry, comet Q4, which uh, have been measured by two satellites simultaneously. One satellite, X-ray satellite Chandra, and this X-ray spectra, and blue curve our theoretical spectra. This is a uh, composition of ions which uh, assigned for this spectra, yeah. a charge transfer mechanism. But second satellite measured extreme ultraviolet emission, soft photons. It seems uh, we don't have this in our lab measurement, but we already had this in space, yeah. It certainly not often happened, yeah, but uh, we have a second satellite, yeah, which measures soft photons. They, uh, uh, in this plot, you see only hard photons, yeah. Uh, after this calculation, we may predict the soft photons. Yeah. This blue curve, it's our prediction, theoretical prediction. This curve certainly calibrate with this uh, spectra because we try to fit this spectra in best way, change the composition of ion. Uh, red curve, it's uh, just as a composition, which is not interesting for us. But you see now, this is relatively good agreement. Don't look on this because this is uh, uh, defects of the detection of the... Uh, uh, Chandra filters here. They're not allowed to measure soft photon. But if we look on the other satellite, on chips, which measure extreme ultraviolet, we see that our theoretical curve below. Well, first of all, I'm very happy we discussed with Alex that we're not above here. Yeah. If we would be above experimental curve, it would be bad because our theoretical prediction much larger would be than uh, observations here. Yeah. But uh, uh, this difference several times show uh, uh, maybe uh, two reasons for this. One, uh, we didn't take into account all mechanism of production because certainly we uh, consider only related to this cascading photon with X-ray. And second, maybe it's direct contamination of, uh, with sun because it's more difficult to uh, protect the observations uh, with uh, extreme ultraviolet uh, equipment uh, because sun... Uh, produce direct uh, uh, extreme ultraviolet emission yeah, and it's more sensitive in the uh, region of the uh, uh, ultraviolet. In this case, it's a still open question. Yeah. Uh, uh, it would be have, uh, good to have another uh, repetition of this, but I'm not sure uh, how it's possible, yeah, because it's very s seldom event when two satellites measure the same system. Uh, uh, just a few words about the theoretical challenges here. Yeah. I talk about uh, spectra, and I described very simple uh, 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 hydrogenic uh, type of ions which capture only one electron. But if I have initially one electron in the core, for example, it is oxygen-7 ion. This oxygen-7 capture electron in highly excited state. It became oxygen-6 helium-like ion. If it's captured with the same spin with a core electron, it would be triplet state. Uh, you see this. If it's uh, with opposite spin, it would be singlet state. Cascading in singlet case, about the same as I described in uh, hydrogenic case before. But in the uh, triplet state, it's different because triplet state doesn't have a ground state. Ground state singlet. It means that all uh, probability just accumulated on this two uh, lowest excited state, triplet state. It's a uh, long living metastable state and uh, 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 P, triplet P state, uh, this state certainly may produce X-ray yeah, also because uh, uh, lifetime of metastable state in one millisecond. Yeah. But uh, for this time, for example, ions uh, may move about 500 meters. Yeah. You, it's very difficult to measure this emission in the lab. You need to do special. If you slow down this ion, it's okay. But it's not a astrophysical velocity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, many questions, yeah, how to measure this in good way. But what was it, okay, what was astrophysical uh, prediction, yeah, uh, and what was our results, yeah? Astrophysical prediction was uh, 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 that uh, if you have uh, this uh, charge transfer mechanism, you will have uh, uh, this metastable state as a major source of emission, most brightest line, yeah? 
This is a mission from Mars here. Uh, by the way, uh, Mars disk is this small circle, and you see around halo. This halo produced because solar wind interact uh, with uh, this uh, atmosphere, extended atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, it's about eight uh, ready uh, of Mars, yeah, this area of halo. And uh, in a recent measurement with uh, XMM Newton, uh, 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 Colonel Denner pay attention to uh, high resolution of this spectral line. This is metastable state one, which I mentioned here, yeah. uh, forbidden spin, forbidden transition. This is a two, intercombination transition from P state, and three, allowed transition, uh, singlet, uh, singlet transition. Theory uh, predict fine for eight, yeah. a measurement shows six, yeah. Uh, in this case, it was a strong evidence for us that with this resolution, at least, yeah, we may say that this halo, which I showed before, uh, have a, 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 a charge transfer emission nature. Uh, Jane, how much time I have? Five minutes, okay, yeah. In this case, yeah, I very briefly only show this. This is Jupiter, yeah, I promised to show the, uh, it's our first uh, project which Alex suggested uh, uh, more than 10 years ago, yeah. We try to calculate X-ray emissions from Jupiter. You see this polar region, uh, blue area, it is a, a, a aurora emission, uh, uh, mostly extreme ultraviolet emission produced by energetic electrons which precipitate uh, along the magnetic line. But this bright spot, it is X-ray emission, uh, which, uh, according to the several research group, yeah, uh, Tom Cravens, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, person who developed uh, this uh, mechanism, uh, this uh, bright spot, it's X-ray emission, because, uh, which produced in charge transfer collision of precipitating ions. Yeah, this ions, when they precipitate inside atmosphere, they lose their electron. They became highly charged ions. They, they capture electron, uh, emit X-ray, but then they lose electron again because energy of this ion is very high. And this process continues long, long time uh, uh, until uh, stopping of these uh, ions. Yeah. And you have an X-ray emission. Uh, I don't have a time for details here. Yeah. Uh, what we did as a physicist, uh, we calculated spectra of this emission here. Yeah. Uh, using only two parameters, yeah. We use the initial energy of these ions, yeah. Uh, and we use the um, uh, relative abundance because we have only two type of ions, oxygen, and two type of elements, oxygen or sulfur. And we use this uh, uh, abundances as a parameter and we use, uh, as I mentioned, energy parameter. Uh, this uh, experimental data from the North Pole, this is from South, you see this. Uh, theoretical curve relatively well described the uh, observational data and we may extract as a parameters here yeah, energy and uh, uh, elemental composition of this precipitating flux. Most interesting uh, certainly part to understand the mechanism of acceleration of this science. Yeah. I think it <laughs> we look forward to yeah, it will be known soon. Yeah. But it's different science, it's not certainly atomic spectroscopy, it should be magnetohydrodynamic. Yeah, let me, I don't have a time to say it was a, a, a some beautiful work uh, 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 by, by uh, Brett Worsley and his collaborator about dark moon emission. People saw emission, uh, this is moon in normal light, yeah, dark side, light side. Uh, when they look on the, uh, with X-ray uh, telescope, they found this uh, bright side provide X-ray, but dark side also, yeah. Uh, what we found in our work, this dark side, it's not really emission from the moon itself. It's emission from the uh, Earth's atmosphere, yeah, uh, which uh, uh, interact with the uh, uh, solar wind highly charged ions. Uh, this is last slide which I would like to show. This is how our solar system looks yeah, from outside. Yeah. This is a distance in the astronomical unit. Astronomical unit is the radius of orbiting of Earth around Sun. Uh, uh, color shows the intensity of X-ray, sun in the center. This is flux of this interstellar gas, neutral gas, yeah. And uh, you could see that uh, uh, X-ray mostly certainly focused near sun because it's most intensive solar wind flux, but also you see this uh, conical region, uh, they related to just focusing, uh, gravitational focusing 
of flux of this neutral gas here in the uh, X-ray, sorry, in the uh, gravitational field of the sun. Uh, I would, don't want to uh, read this conclusion, a conclusion because it just describes the uh, uh, modern stage of our research here. I would like to uh, just uh, uh, make emphasis about conclusion two, uh, because I'm insider of Dalgarna's group, yeah. I had a chance to learn, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, how it works, what kind of strong feature of our group and what a weak feature. I would like to say that uh, Alex uh, certainly, uh, and you will agree, always uh, formulate well scientific problem with kind of very high precision and accuracy. At least you know what to do. But uh, what is our group famous also that uh, we also may provide comprehensive analysis and uh, formulation of unsolvable problems here. It's an example there, just slide. You see Professor Dalgarna just uh, formulates a new challenging idea for us here. Uh, please pay attention to his right hand, glass and right hand, yeah. Uh, second uh, point which I would like to say, because uh, Alex always interested in science generally, and he like interdisciplinary research here. Yeah. If you look on this slide, yeah, it's a slide which described uh, interdisciplinary uh, research and interaction, yeah. This is uh, uh, Professor Dalgarna uh, discussed and analyzed some uh, biological, bi medical experiments of professor, with Professor Zhdanova. It's experiment about zebra fish, yeah, about uh, sleep propensity of zebra fish. Uh, pay attention, Alex, keep glass in the left hand, yeah. It means that right hand for core science, left hand for interdisciplinary research. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you talk about eyebrows, yeah, I have also signals, yeah. Uh, let's look, it's not old stuff. <laughs> This year, what is a specific uh, strong feature of uh, Dalgarna's school? Yeah? Uh, we always try to work close to experimentalists. Yeah? Peter Beisdorfer just support me in this way. Yeah? And look on this. This is uh, a member of Dalgarna's team, uh, Dr. Zang and Dr. Karchenko, uh, do some kind of experimental uh, research in uh, classical or semi-classical collisions. Yeah? Uh, we hope to use this research in modeling or some non-equilibrium astrophysical processes. Yeah. Uh, the question, one question, what do you think, how this photo appears here? Yeah. Who did this photo? Another member of Dalgarna's team, uh, predoctoral student Stefano, he's in here. Yeah. It means that he also was in this experimental field here, yeah, in this time. Yeah. It's just, I uh, have a, at least uh, 11 additional features, but I will not consume your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Okay, questions for Vasily? Uh, I understand that you and Alex were working together on uh, whether or not the winds the wind-blown bubbles around some powerful stars might, in fact, yeah. show up as individual sources. Yeah. You, are, are you doing that? And, and if so, is it looking promising? No, no. We, we're doing very trivial modeling, yeah, Tom. We, we just uh, in the beginning, yeah. I, I hope that next 20 years we will report more precision results about what you're asking, yeah, about this creation of uh, uh, additional area of blowing up, yeah. But Right now, no, it's only modeling of the spectra based on the uh, charge transfer, which we know. Yeah. 